Hi, it's official. The Google Brain team joined the pre-trained vision and language models business. Their new model called SimVLM uses a simple training procedure and promises generative capabilities and generalization and zero-shot behavior when it comes to tasks combining images and text so you can ask the model things by just alluding to what can be seen in an image, like where to observe this animal and the model just answers to this open-endedly. If you're curious about what the authors say about how SimVLM works, about what they don't say, and how this compares to previous vision and language models, grab a cup of coffee and join us for this AI coffee break. We have known Google research from text-only models like T5 or vision-only models like VIT, but now with SimVLM they propose a visual language model. Well, prior literature called these things vision and language models, but sure, they are Google, they are allowed to be visionary, right? If you're not yet familiar with vision and language transformers and want to get the prerequisite knowledge for this video, make sure to check out at least this one previous video where we explain how this is done. Or rather, was done, because this paper here criticizes that the first vision and language models did not process the raw image, but features extracted by an object detection backbone like the faster RCNN. And then, of course, the problem is that the transformer sees the image through the looking glass of the faster RCNN, and you know, if that looking glass is cracked or blurry, that might bottle the whole procedure. But some of the latest architectures like CLIP or VILT do process the image end-to-end, -end, but the authors of SimVLM decided against highlighting this too much and rather do not mention this at all. In any case, SimVLM gets rid of the faster RCNN backbone and looks at the image like VIT does, or almost, because they find that the linear projection of VIT should be rather replaced by three blocks of ResNet to extract image patch vectors. So sure, unlike most of the previous work on vision and language models, these weights are learned and updated. The text is tokenized and represented through word vectors, and the image vectors and text vectors alike, all endowed with positional embeddings, are all blended and mixed together by a transformer like they wouldn't even be part of different modalities. But remember, the only difference to previous work is that the image vectors are now extracted by a ResNet that trains with the whole transformer, while the original vision and language models, but not the most recent ones, used a whole pre-trained but then fixed faster RCNN backbone for this. Okay, cool. Moving on to the next contribution of the paper, the authors further highlight shortcomings of existing work in that it uses multitask learning by formulating multiple losses like masked language modeling where words are masked and the model now informed also with the image has to predict what a masked word should B, or the task of image sentence alignment, or masked region classification, and others. But SimVLM does not need all this. It can get away with one single objective, which is the so-called prefix language modeling objective. Most vision and language models out there use the masked language modeling loss, where a bird-based vision and language transformer processes text following the idea of a denoising autoencoder. The original sequence is altered by randomly masked some tokens and the model must predict what these masked tokens had originally contained. But this masked language modeling based models are not really language models in the classical sense, because they can't really compute the joint probability of the tokens in a sentence by autoregressively factorizing the probability. You know, that is when you are applying the chain rule over and over. And SimVLM wants to be like a language model because they have the advantage that they can open-endedly generate text, while they rely on context and not on fine-tuning for zero-shot capabilities, as seen for example with GPT-3, where one can show some examples as context at the start of the sequence and GPT-3 can continue it by picking up the pattern. But now SimVLM wants to generate text also given image tokens as context. So the authors use something similar to the autoregressive modeling the GPT family does, 
prefix language modeling, where the autoregressive factorization does not happen on the whole sequence, but only at the end of it. So the image, for example, acts as a prefix or context, and then the autoregressive factorization from left to right happens only on the text. Of course, this prefix can extend on the text tokens too, if the goal is for the model to continue a piece of text that has been already written. With this, SimVLM processes the prefix much like a mask language model, bidirectionally, but can perform unidirectional open-ended text generation on the rest, like a real language model. And this is cool, because this is how SimVLM can do things like this and complete a sequence of an image and a question by answering that question. What I understand so far from the paper is that this autoregressiveness delivers these great zero-shot abilities seen here, because SimVLM is like GPT-3, but now with text and image. But Miss Coffee Bean, this makes no sense, because GPT-2 is autoregressive in the same way GPT-3 is, and while GPT-3 has zero-shot and few-shot capabilities, GPT-2 doesn't really have these impressive features. Then what is the secret ingredient here for SimVLM? What did we miss? Let's take a step back. What we understand from this paper so far is that all you need, sorry for this, I cannot actually hear all you need anymore. So all you need, but wish you didn't need, is a vision and language transformer that processes the image without a huge and stiff pre-processing step beforehand and a model that is generative, at least on the text part. With this, SimVLM beats state-of-the-art on standard vision and language tasks like VQA, NLVR2, SNL IVE, image captioning. Wow, right? It makes us wonder why no Buddy came up with this simple idea before. Miss Coffee Bean, why are you stopping me? Did I did I miss something? Oh uh, yes, I did the data. <laughs> I mean, of course, SimVLM must be pre-trained on lots and lots of data first, like every other model beforehand too. So this data is we cite a large scale weakly labeled dataset, which has better potential towards zero shot generalization. What does this last part even mean? I don't know, let's go to this dedicated data section. So they are using, we cite, a large scale noisy image text data which has better potential for zero shot generalization. Specifically, we use the image and alt text pairs introduced in GIA and collaborators in 2021, which are crawled from the web with minimal post processing. Ah. So these are images and captions, certainly not like the 330,000 MS Coco image text pairs, because MS Coco has images and well-written crowdsourced captions. Maybe it's something more like the 3.3 million sized conceptual captions dataset that contains images and alt text captions, but curated. Or maybe something as large scale as OpenAI's crawled image and alt text captions it used for clip, right? So the simple architecture of SimVLM and this data section completely explain the superior results of SimVLM over everything else they compare to. Miss Coffee Bean, why are you poking me? You, you tell me that I should look for the amount of data that this mysterious GIA and collaborators data set contains? Okay, sure, I mean, it will be something similar to these numbers of the related work, right? What? You are telling me that we are speaking about over 1 billion image text pairs? <laughs> but Miss Coffee Bean, the number billion or any number indicating the amount of data samples is not anywhere in the SimVLM paper. I had to check another one. And large scale does not necessarily mean one billion. Hundreds of millions were still considered large scale the last I checked. Okay, so if the amount of used data is not a thing to put in the abstract and everywhere else in the paper, I don't know what is. So you're telling me that they are training on 1 billion data samples and beat the state of the art, but don't even mention the data amount and advertise the architectural simplicity of end-to-end -end image processing and that they need just one loss instead. <laughs> but it is exactly this, the data aspect, that is the clue to everything. We need to start from the billion images and then explain what we can do with that. If we have 10,000 more data samples to go than Alex Mert had for pre-training, then of course we do not need as many losses and the heavy multitask learning procedure that Alex Mert needs. 
Alex Mert has to compensate the lack of data with more thorough supervision, so losses. If we have a thousand times more data than Wilbert had during pre-training, then of course we have more freedom to learn our own image representations flexibly instead of employing the inductive biases of other architectures like the faster RCNN and not even train them further. Miss Coffee Bean, get me out of here, I am too mad. What I mean to say by this. I hope to see a better framing of the advances of SimVLM in a future version of this paper. I hope to see more emphasis on the enormous importance of the data, choosing architectural details, inserting or getting rid of inductive biases heavily relies on the amount of available training data. It's not like nobody before reading this paper never thought about removing the faster RCNN backbone or getting rid of all the losses making optimization overly complicated in most vision and language models. But the authors of SimVLM thought about this and could afford doing this and did all the heavy lifting to get all the tiny details right so that this beast can train in parallel over many GPUs and converge. They have done a great job and they have written a great paper. But it becomes clearer and clearer how hard it is to keep making good science in machine learning. In a scientific experiment, in order to show the gains of a component with respect to the state of the art, that component and that component only should be changed and the rest should be kept fixed. In this case, it is nice to see this simpler architecture with no object detection backbone and the simplified training procedure, but this is also combined with bringing up a lot more data than the related work had, and we do not see at all how these choices behave in the smaller data regimes previous architectures had. Especially because nobody else has the 1 billion image text data set the authors here has to conduct the missing experiments showing how the proposed architecture behaves with respect to increasing amounts of data. It is even more of the author's job to conduct these comparisons and show where the performance gains in SimVLM really come from. So I'm just calling for more honesty when highlighting the paper contributions and where the gains come from. That's all. In any case, it's an archive version of the paper anyway, where maybe getting the first version out was a rush to mark the territory or who knows. I'm sure we will see an improved version soon. Thanks for listening until the end, even if it got really ranty. Now get out of here and read the paper and the blog post link below in the description yourself. They are so clearly written and visualized. See you next time.